So let's get started by designing the mug. So we're gonna go ahead and click on new project. And then Cricut has designed a mug template. Using this will make it super convenient and easy to make your mugs. So to find that, we're gonna go click on projects, all categories, and then scroll down to infusible ink. And then it's actually right here, but just in case by the time you're watching it, it's not there. If you just type in mug, it'll pop up for you. So go ahead and click on mug design setup. So from here, you can see um, that there's instructions, there's material list. This is basically just everything you need to know to make your mug. We'll walk through that as we go throughout the project here. But if you come up here to finish size and click on this drop down menu, you'll see that there are different designs that you can start with. So we have a small straight edge. So if you can see right here, obviously there's a straight edge, but if you do small ripped edge, you can see that it changes and it's now ripped. And there's also scallop, and then there's wavy and zigzag. And then you can also see that there are currently two Cricut mug sizes. There's the small and the large, so the 12 ounce and the 15. You'll wanna make sure that you select your correct mug size. So for this project today, I'm gonna to use the small scallop edge. So I've got that selected and now I'm gonna click customize. All right, so this is what pops up here. If you head over to the layers panel, you'll see we have three different layers. We have one that says hide this layer before cutting, and that's these three guys. And I'll talk more about that in a second. And then we have the scalloped, and then we have this outer line as well. So these two pieces right here are what the Cricut is going to cut, and that's what we're gonna wrap our mug in. At the end, we're actually gonna end up hiding this, but this is super helpful because it's gonna show us where the center is on each side of the mug and also just straight in the middle of the mug. So we're gonna use that as a guide to line up our design and then before we cut, we'll hide it. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is find our design or our image that we wanna use. So we'll click on images. You can upload an image if you buy an SVG file online. You can search through Cricut Access. I knew I wanted to use a specific one. I've been wanting to use it for a while and wasn't sure what, and now I feel like the mug is a perfect opportunity. And so it says crafting forever, housework, whenever. So I'm just gonna type that in, and it's this one right here. So click on it and click insert images. Okay, so as you can see, currently it's two different colors, right? And if you come over here, there's two different layers. So the Cricut would cut um, it separately. But I want it to be one single layer because it's going to cut out of our mug template. So I'm going to click on the whole design and I'm going to weld it. And so now it's one single layer. So now I can take our design and we're just going to click on this arrow and click and drag and just size it to however large or small you want it on your mug. So I know I want one on um, each side of the mug so I'm going to put one here and then I'll put one over here. But first, I'm just gonna size this to what I think would work. And I think that looks okay. So now I'm going to copy and paste. So I have the same exact size, and I'm gonna put this one over here as well. And now I want to make sure everything is lined up and centered straight. So what I'm gonna do is I have this one selected. Now I'm gonna come over here, and I'm holding down the shift on my keyboard, and I'm selecting the second one and I'm going to come to a line and say align top so that they're completely straight and now I'm going to group them together so now we've got them perfectly lined up and the next thing that we're going to do is center them on this blue template so I'm gonna I've got this highlighted now I'm going to click shift again and highlight the blue scalloped mug wrap and I'm going to say align center so now it's perfectly aligned top and bottom and left to right on both sides. So it's perfectly centered, perfectly aligned. And the next thing we're gonna do is click on our group, click on the scallop and then the outline, and we're gonna say attach. Now we're gonna go ahead and hide that layer. So now everything is attached together and the Cricut knows to cut our design on top of our mug press. The other thing I wanted to mention here before we get moving on, it's super important that you don't adjust the size of this at all. Um, if you do, like I just did, go ahead and click undo so it goes back to the correct size. It's perfectly sized for your mug. Again, this is the smaller mug, so just make sure you don't mess with that. 
Then from here, we'll make sure we have our correct machine selected, which I do, I have the maker, and we're gonna go ahead and click on make it. So we're working with infusible ink, which means we need to go ahead and mirror our design. So it's gonna cut it backwards, but when we place it on our mug, it will be correct. Then we'll go ahead and hit continue. It's gonna to connect to our maker over Bluetooth, and then we will select infusible ink transfer sheets for our cutting setting. If you are wanting to make this exact project and not go through all these steps, I will leave a link below as well for this project in design. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get our infusible ink onto our mat. I'm using a standard grip cutting mat today, and I went ahead and cut my infusible ink transfer sheet down to size. I'm using this mint color, and I also wanted to highlight too, as you can tell, there's a big difference between what the sheet looks like out of the box and what's on the box. Once the heat is applied, it will turn into this mint vibrant color, but at first it's more of like a dull. So if you haven't used infusible ink before, just know that that's totally normal. And one other thing I wanted to mention while I'm getting this applied here, you can use any infusible ink transfer sheets. It doesn't have to just be the mug press transfer sheets that came out. You can use any of them. So I just used a brayer tool here. I like to use this just to help get it applied onto the mat. I've got my maker connected over Bluetooth. Again, you can use any Cricut machine for infusible ink. So we'll get this loaded in and we'll get cutting. I did want to highlight quick while it's cutting here. Right now, it's cutting the design and the inside of the words, and it's doing what's called the kiss cut, which is just a normal cut. So it's cutting the transfer sheet, but not cutting all the way through the material. But right now, as you can see, it's going around, and it's gonna cut that template out for us. And it's actually gonna cut it twice, and it will cut all the way through around the design, around the template. So just wanted to give you a heads up. It's totally normal for it to cut all the way through. To remove the transfer sheet from the mat, I'm gonna flip the mat over and bend the mat back while I hold the material straight. So next up, we're gonna weed. If you've never weeded infusible ink before, it's just a little different than weeding iron-on or vinyl. I actually think it feels like a really thick paper and instead of using a weeder tool or any other kind of tool to remove the negative space or to remove the design, we are actually going to use our fingers and we'll use tools if we need to. But I'm going to start by just trimming off the excess vinyl here. And then the first thing that I like to do is actually kind of roll it back a little bit and you'll hear it kind of like crack and move. And that's great because we want to get the letters and the design off of the transfer sheet. So just kind of I like to think like loosening it, up, loosening it up a little bit. So if you remember while I was cutting at the end there, I talked about how it's going to cut through around the template. So that's what it did here. So I'm actually going to remove this first. And then I did notice over here, it had a little bit of a hard time cutting through it all the way. My blade definitely needs to be replaced because I actually had to cut this again because the last time I cut it, um, it didn't cut all the way through. So I'd adjust the pressure to more and it sounds like I just need to get a new blade. So two things. One, make sure your blade is not dull. When working with infusible ink, it can be a little bit more challenging. And then two, if this happens to you like it has to me right now, not a huge deal you can just cut around and it will be just fine. All right, so I'm gonna start at the end here and remove these pieces. And then we're gonna remove the inside of the letters. So again, we are just gonna kind of be trying to pop up off, pop the letters up off of this clear transparent sheet and they should come off easily for you. If not, you might wanna try adding more pressure to your infusible ink. I know some people on our team like to just cut the infusible ink that way. So definitely play around with it, do some test cuts, but it should just come off just this easily. If you can see, okay, I'm just kind of rolling it back and popping it off. So this is probably gonna take me, I would guess, five, 10 minutes to weed. Um, I am gonna just go nice and slow, especially 
when we get to the cursive letters here, and I'll do one right now with you. I just want to make sure that I don't accidentally peel off like the inside of the letters, just because those are a little bit smaller. So I'm just going nice and slow. Okay, so that didn't go super great. So I'm actually gonna try from this side. If some of the insides of those letters pop up off, you can just place it right back on. And I'm gonna grab a tool because as you can see the R, the inside of the R is coming up off. So I'm just gonna push it down to help it stay and then just kind of push it back. So you wanna take your time. And this is why I think making designs to use with infusible ink, I try to keep it, I don't wanna say simple because the cursive can get a little challenging, but just be conscientious that it can be a little more challenging than your standard vinyl or iron-on when it comes to weeding. I guess I would say I try to keep it more on the simple side. That helps at all, but maybe you are Really good at weeding infusible ink. Okay, so I still have the inside of the E right here. It is so tiny. And I'm just going to place it back on, ink side up, and then just kind of move it with the weeder tool. Okay, so I'm gonna weed the rest and then we will get this applied onto our mug. All right, so we're all finished. I'm just gonna flip this over and double check. I didn't accidentally remove anything or I forgot to weed anything, but this looks good. So that took me eight, nine minutes. And like I said, I go slow because I just want to be extra careful, but I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then we'll pull out the mug press. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is take a lint roller and we are going to just clean off the mug. This will just make sure that there's no dust or debris or dog hair if you're like at my house um, so just make sure you wipe it down good okay so the next thing we're going to do is take our infusible ink transfer sheet and we're going to apply it onto our mug i like to have the handle facing me just like this and then we're just going to wrap the infusible ink around and then we're going to do our best to get the scallops centered to the mug handle I think it's easiest to look from here to the handle and this scallop to the handle, but you could also line up these tabs underneath as well. So I'm just going to get this lined up, make sure that everything is flush on the bottom here and flush on top. And then the last thing to double check is that it's at least a half inch from both sides to the handle. That's super important, otherwise the press might not be able to reach. So I think I'm happy with this here. And then I'm going to push down on one side. And then I'm literally like pulling this as tight as I can. Still trying to keep it level. And then we will push down on the other side as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over and make sure everything looks good. You wanna make sure there's no air bubbles or kinks anything like that can interfere with the transfer. Then I am gonna take some heat resistant tape and there are just a few spots I want to just make sure are pressed down really well. So if there's anything you want to just double up, you can add the tape. I've seen some people literally tape the whole entire top here and like push it down and same thing with the bottom. Um, and that's totally up to you if you wanna do that. I have had success so far without doing it, but I'll keep you posted if that changes. So I think that looks good. Um, I might put one just right down here. Perfect. So that's what that looks like. Now I'm going to grab the mug press and we'll get going from there. All right. So I've got my mug press. I have plugged it in. We'll get it turned on and it's going to preheat. If it's your first time using the mug press, you'll need to plug it into your computer and make sure that the software is up to date. I also have an EasyPress mat here. You don't need one of these. I'm just going to use this to put my mug 
um, on after to let it cool. You could use like a kitchen trivet as well. So we'll get that preheated. Um, when it's finished, it will chime and turn green and then we'll get our mug inserted in. A few other quick things to note while this is preheating. This does emit an odor and it is kind of strong. So it's recommended to use in a well-ventilated area. I like to just crack a window. It's the same smell if you've worked with infusible ink before, um, but just know there is a little bit of an odor. Okay, so it's all preheated. And as you can tell, there's no time or temperature gauges on here. It's all automatic. It figures it out on its own. So all you have to do is lift the handle on the right. And then we're gonna place our mug in. Obviously be careful, it's very hot. And then we're just gonna make sure that we can't see any of the scallops or any of our design. So as we close this here, I'm just gonna double check that it's covered as well. And then as soon as you close it like that, it will automatically start. So it looks good. Looks like we've completely covered the design. And then this should take about six minutes, but again, it just depends on your space. So I will time this and I will turn the camera back on as soon as it's finished. Okay, so just beeped and finished. We can go ahead and lift the lever and then carefully pull the mug out. I'm gonna put it here on my easy press mat. Again, you can use a kitchen trivet or a hot pad holder. I'll turn the mug press off. It's recommended to wait about 15 minutes or until it's completely cool to remove the transfer sheet. So I'll follow back up when it's cooled off. All right, it's cooled. It definitely is still warm, but I'm too impatient to wait. So we're going to peel this off. So I'm starting by removing all the tape and then I'll remove the transfer sheet. Okay, here we go. Ooh. All right, there it is. So I'll try and do a little up close here for you. I think everything looks really good. I'm super excited. Love this mint color. Awesome. All right, so that is how you use the Cricut Mug Press. If you're looking to snag one, we have them available on our website. It's www.craft-e-corner.com. We are an official Cricut retailer, so I'll include the links below to everything that I used here, but definitely go snag one if you are in the need to make a bunch of mugs. I'm super excited with how this turned out. So thanks so much for watching our video today, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below, and we'd love to help you out.